Thank you for watching Zor House of Prayer's live broadcast. We stream live every Sunday morning and would like to invite you to come out and be in service with us. Sunday school starts at 10 a.m. and morning worship begins at 11 a.m. We are located three and a half miles past the Morgantown Mall on 19 South. Take a right onto Sugar Grove Road for a mile and the church sits on the right with a sign at the foot of the hill. Thank you and God bless.
It's up there on the screen too. If you want to, you don't want to use the book. It's right up on the screen.
situation is. Praise God. Because a lot of times they don't know. You know what I'm saying? I thank God for doctors. I do. I thank God for doctors. You know? Praise God. I think, uh, Mike, we're going to do Chain Breaker. Okay? I know it's probably a handout, but we're going to do it anyway. Because he is a chain breaker. Amen? Amen. He can break any chain that binds you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yep, if you've got pain, he's a pain taker. Praise God. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. He said, I am the way the truth and the life. Yes, yes. Praise God. He can break any chains yes, that binds us, that keeps us tied down. We don't want to be tied down. No, we don't. Praise God. All right, here we go. Here we go. You've been walking the same old road for miles and miles. You've been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lies. If you've been trying to fill the same old hole inside, there's a better life. There's a better life. You got pain. He's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a pain maker. You need freedom or saving. He's a prison changing savior. You got change. Savior, you got 
we've done this song but we're going to do it today praise God Let 
just hold on. I got a plan. I got a plan. I said, okay, Lord, I'm trusting you. He said, I got a plan. And that was the message. <laughs> and I thought, oh, okay. He's got a plan for each and every one of us. He's got a plan. So I come home and told my wife, because I get giddy when God speaks to me. I don't know, it's just something with... Because that's not often. It's not like we have a conversation every day. But when he literally, I know it's him and he's speaking, it's like I get goosebumps. Yeah. Same when I hear a praise and worship song or something that just touches me. Yeah. The hair raises up on the back of my neck. It's just, I love that feeling because I know who it is. Amen. So I get home, I tell Debbie, I got a message, I got a message. Well, Saturday morning I get up and read our devotionals that we have. And it's Jeremiah 29, 11. He has a plan. I thought, wow, that ain't confirmation. So then my sissy comes over. Uh, like I said, mom, and then once again, Wednesday, she takes mom to the doctor. And then this is when all this started with mama. So therefore, uh, you know, just mine's going 100 miles an hour with that. So the devil just tries to throw stuff in there and mess us up. But we, we don't have to let him win. But uh, we started talking about he's got a plan for everybody, you know, he's in charge, so there's another confirmation. And then pastor, every Sunday morning, always th throws up uh, scripture and tells everybody to have a good church service. Every Sunday morning, I get that beat from her on Facebook. Jeremiah 29, 11. <laughs> confirmation again. And sissy's doing the uh, Sunday school this morning and talking about everybody's got a plan. <laughs> So I tried to get him to stay off my message for a little bit, but uh, I, I'm going to do a little different. I, I do have a video that, once again, plays into this message that I was looking for an intro video, and this one come up, and it's, well, I'll let it speak for itself. Go ahead and play that out for you. and a hope. That's the first slide, huh? It's Jeremiah 29, 11. Just click the arrow, the right-hand arrow. But that's the, uh, to give you a future and a hope. But in order for us to do this, we must trust God. Amen. That's the biggest key in this, is trusting which is extremely hard for us humans to trust. Anyone but ourselves. Total trust in anyone else is hard. 
You know, there's some companies that do these workshops and someone will blindfold someone and then you got to fall back into your co-worker's arms. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Bill, you want to come up and let me blindfold you and, and you can fall off the step into me and Justin's arms. Would, would you do that? You're thinking long and hard on that, brother. <laughs> but you see what I'm saying? And that's your son. But yet, you hesitated and you thought, now wait a minute. Yeah, what if they let me fall flat on my back? I would hope your son would help me. I would try to catch a brother. But, <laughs> but you see what I'm saying? It's very hard to put your total trust in someone. But yet, that's exactly what we need to do. And the Lord is the only one that we can put that total trust in. Above and beyond ourselves. I don't even trust myself as much as I do the Lord. But we tend to come to him as a last resort. When he should be the first resort. Like the woman with the blood issue. What she had in the past for 12 years, I think. One was 18. Huh? One was 18. One was 18. She had blood issue and she tended, she exhausted probably every other possibility she could throughout them years trying to get this blood to stop. Right. Then she comes to the one that could stop it. Mm-hmm. Like that. And it stopped. But you see, he was the last resort. I smoked for years since I was like 13 years old when I lit my first cigarette. I stole out of Mama's cigarette pack. I mean, and it was Renee's fault because she <laughs> always enticed me with these bad things. She was a bad influence. <laughs> but, you know, I, I tried the gum, I tried the lozenges, I tried vaping. Once again, my natural ability, I tried everything I could think of because I wanted to quit until I finally went to the one that could quit. Help me quit. I said, Lord, I am done with this. This November, when Brother Frank comes back, will be a year. Smoke free. Why? Because I put all my trust in the one that could do it. I couldn't do it. I need go pack after pack of that gum, lozenger after lozenger, it doesn't work. Don't get me wrong, Facebook people, if you did quit by the gum, great, glad for you. I couldn't. I couldn't until I trusted the one that could do it. And you know, it's the same with anything you have, any addiction. We was talking about these young kids that are on drugs and alcohol and stuff. It's the same thing. You can try and quit for years and years and years. Trust me, been there and done that. And it wasn't until I said, Lord, I'm done. Take this away. And there it is. Here I am. Drug free, alcohol free, and now smoke free. He chips it off a little at a time. He could take it all away at once, but the problem is we won't release it all at once. We're the stubborn ones that will only release it one step at a time. Because, you see, we have a predisposition to trust in what we can see and feel. We have a hard time turning the natural into supernatural. Because you see, when God does it, it's not natural. It's supernatural. I would much rather be on the supernatural side than the natural side. Trust me. The natural side don't work. Proverbs 3, 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And do not lean on your own understanding. Not only here are we commanded to trust in the Lord, we're also told not to trust our own understanding. Why? Because we mess things up. 
Every time we try and think it through, we mess it up. This scripture is in there for a reason. Pay attention to what it's saying. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't just give him a piece of you. Give it all to him. And don't lean on your own understanding. Because you cannot understand. We can understand the natural. We don't understand the supernatural. Until we release it to the one that is supernatural. And has the supernatural powers. That's what we need to do. Ignore what you can see and understand. Trust the Lord. Ignore the balance sheet in your checkbook that says you're behind, you ain't got, you're in the red. Ignore that and trust God. Ignore what the doctor says and trust God. Don't get me out of context there and say, oh, you don't believe in doctors. Yes, I do. You give him a talent to help us out. But what I'm saying is don't put all your trust in the doctor except the main physician. That's who you put your trust in. Ignore what the lawyer says when you have a difficulty with a brother or a sister or a husband or a wife. Ignore what the lawyer says. Trust God. Ignore what the economy says. Ignore what the stock market says. Trust God. Ignore what all the politicians say because most of them are liars. The old saying, you can't trust a politician. Don't get me wrong if there's some politicians listening. Well, uh, we probably get hate mail now. Justin. We've been blessed. We've been doing this a while and haven't got any hate mail yet. And we don't want any. Don't want any. We're doing good. Trump might actually come in business one day. You never know. Boy, we might get hate mail on that too. Oh, I better just shut up and get back to my message. <laughs> However, it is much easier to say it than to live it, isn't it? I can stand up here all day and say, I, I, you know, just give it to the Lord, give it to the Lord. When I was out in the world and things around me was falling apart and falling down on me, Mom would say, uh, you gotta give it to the Lord. Yeah, yeah, okay, Mom. <laughs> you ain't the one that's tapping into. If you was in my shoes, you wouldn't be saying that. Okay. If we only knew how easy it was. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. He's got a plan. He's got a plan. When a problem comes along, what do we immediately do? We spring into action. Action. And we try to fix it. We try to take care of it. Try and work it out. We, 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 we. Instead of going to him, 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 him. Because he's the one that can take care of it. Like that. Your house deal a little bit ago, Sam. That was an adventure, wasn't it? It's a done deal now, though, isn't it? You enjoying it? You love it? Yes. Got to care of it. Thing is, all that worrying and stuff that was transpiring from start to finish didn't have to be. Because when you first said you wanted it, what did that video say? Call upon me. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it will be open. You presented it, but then you you didn't put it all there. You kind of held on like, oh, I wonder if the bank's going to approve it. I wonder if this. You know what? Ten banks might have disapproved. Because the last one that did approve it might have been a lower interest rate. Your payments have been lower. You paid less. But the first 10 declined you. I don't know if that's what happened. I'm just saying <laughs> that could happen. And then you would get depressed and all that, right? We don't have to. Trust in the Lord. Easier said than done. But listen, he's got a plan. Uh, we even try that with our salvation. When I straighten up, I'll start going to church again. When I quit drinking, I've been there and done that. I know what I'm talking about up here. When I quit going to the bars, then I'm going to go to church. Mike's going to clean himself up real pretty and nice like the Lord doesn't know what I look like. 
He didn't know where I looked like when I was in the pit. Yeah, he did. Because he was there with me the whole time. That's the thing. You come. He'll clean you up. You come. You make the effort. That's all he wants is a willing vessel. You come. He's got a plan for everybody's lives. It's up to us whether we're going down the right road. You can be going down the right road because you know Christ. You can be going down the right road the wrong way. Because you're saved, you're following Christ, but the problem is I'm doing it Mike's way. When in fact, I should be doing it God's way. To see my wife, when I told her that phrase, she said, that don't sound right. <laughs> no, it doesn't naturally, but supernaturally it does. Because you can be going the right way or the wrong way on the right road. A lot of us Christians are. Yeah. Why? Because we're aimlessly going around because we don't know what we're doing. Because we ain't got a plan. We ain't listening to the one that does. How many football teams, Mr. Justin, would go out there and the coach says, listen, guys, just go out there. We're in the playoffs. I just want you to go out there and have fun. Just do whatever you want to do. What, what play, coach? I don't. Just go out there and play. Just have fun. Not one. <laughs> not one. Would they win? Not Probably one. not a game. <laughs> Why? Because they have to have what? A game plan. <laughs> And they have to follow the game plan. Otherwise, they look like a bunch of, not even high school, they're probably peewee leagues out there. If they don't have a plan and they go out there, the receivers ain't going to know what the quarterback's doing. The quarterback ain't going to know nothing. It's going to be chaos. That's your life if you're wandering around aimlessly and not following what God has planned for you. I'm too young. I'm too old. No, you're not. God has a plan from the time you took your first breath till you take your last. He's got something for you to do. The only reason you're not is because you're lazy. Right? I got enough on my plate. Then eat some of it. You got too much on your plate? Do some of it. That way it'll be off your plate and you can put more on there. Right? Follow God's plan. He's got a plan, and I am way off my message here. <laughs> Solomon. Solomon told us, trust the Lord. And the scriptures bear evidence to the fact that when we ignore this simple wisdom, bad things happen. Right? <laughs> when you take the wrong job, Okay, and you're measurable in this job. But you took it. Uh, he wasn't the one God had for you, but you jumped ahead of the game. Maybe you're in a not so good marriage. Maybe you jumped ahead of God, not the one he had for you, but you wanted to do what you wanted to do. Right? Maybe you had children way before you should have. I jumped ahead of God. I love each and every one of them, but I started young. Then we turn around, God, why did you let this happen to me? You're blaming God for what you did. He had nothing in it. The Spirit was trying to lean you this way, but you knew what you was doing, so you went on your own happy little way, and now you pay the consequences. But yet we seem to blame God. Or, Pastor, why didn't you tell me? <laughs> Play the blame game. <laughs> Abraham and Sarah. Abraham was promised a child, wasn't he? But he thought, I'm going to right now. Well, right now. I'm old. My wife's older. Really getting old. Okay. So what did Abraham do? He fell prey to the tendency to trust his own understanding. Try to fix this because God, you're you're behind the game here. 
So you promised me a child, so I'm going to take the reins and make the promise come true myself. Everyone hopefully knows what happened there. You had Isaac and you had Ishmael. Plaguing the world today with their feuding. Still today, because of what Abraham did thousands of years ago by not following God's plan. It still plagues this earth today. You have the heirs of Isaac and the heirs of Ishmael fighting and feuding in the Middle East. Because of this right here. Because he didn't wait upon the Lord. Go out and get that new car that you can't afford. See what happens to your bank account. See what happens to you mentally when you can't afford it, but you want it. So you go get it anyways. And if you would have waited another year, you'd have a better job and everything and could afford even a better car. But you didn't wait upon the Lord, so therefore you had to stay in the same dumpy job that you're in because you have to make the payments on the cars you shouldn't have to begin with. All comes to this. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and don't lean on your own understanding. Wait upon Him. He's got a plan. He failed to trust the Lord. Hmm. We'll go back to Jeremiah 29, 11. Jeremiah spoke judgment for Israel. And also he spoke a promise. You see, in that chapter, what chapter 29, he told them that they're going to be in captivity for 70 years. That's a mean blow. That's some bad news. But he proceeded to tell them a message of hope with that. Because you will get out of it. Not right now. You're going to have to go through 70 years of slavery. But there is an exit. So don't look at your situation that you have right now. Know that all things work to the good that those that love the Lord. So therefore, don't look at where you're at right now, where you're sitting right now in the big pen of life. If you're depending on God and you're trusting in God, know he has a plan. Amen. So what you're in might only be for a season. Mm -hmm. Might only be for a little while. Mm -hmm. But always remember, the good is right around the corner. Amen. Because my word says so. Amen. Trust the Lord. And if we trust the Lord, then you should be trusting his word. Right? And it's all hope. Hope is current circumstances is not final. Hope declares that it isn't the end of the story. We can trust the Lord even in difficult circumstances if we bear in mind that our hope is not in us, not in the circumstance, but our hope is in the Lord. God has a plan. Trust him. Move into the place that he has ordained you to. He has called you to do something. If Brother Bill would not be sitting at that piano, he would be not doing what the Lord ordained him to do. And we would all be suffering for it. Not just him. Everybody that hears him play, that hears the praise and worship, the drums, every, if they didn't do what God called them to do, there's many of us sitting here today in, on live stream that are not doing what God called you to do. You're sitting. You say, well, I gave my life to the Lord. Then give it to him. All. All of it. That's the problem. Too many people come to this altar and say, here I am, Lord. And then they get up and say, but there's part of me. It's like a, you're holding on to like a stout teddy bear or something. It's worth thousands of dollars. I've seen on Roadshow. Those things are worth some money. Wish I had a dozen of them. 
But it's like you're holding on to something. What are you holding on to? Anything you had prior to getting on your knees is nothing compared to what you can have when you get up off those knees. Because then you got the Lord in you. Then you got the Spirit helping you. You're, it's endless what you can do with it. But it's up to us what we do with it. Because free will. He leaves it up to you. Are you going to give him all of you or are you just going to give him part of you? If you give it all to him, you're in a much happier place. If you only give him part of you, mm -mm. because sometimes you're real happy and giddy and then other times it's like, oh Lord, get me out of this mess. Why are you in that mess? Because you didn't give it all to him. Because you're hanging on to part of you that might not be what God wants you to do. My, it's your plan for life, not his. It doesn't work that way. Because you see, he gave his life for you. He paid the price for you. He didn't pay the price for half of you. He paid the price for all of you. And that's what he wants, and he will accept nothing else. You want a better life? Give it to God. All of it. He will give you a better life. Follow his plan and not your own. You'll have a better life. Continue to follow your plan. More power to you. Been there and done that. I've tried that. i tried giving half and holding on to half. Being Mike's way and a little bit of the Lord's way. Problem is, it was mostly Mike's way when I did that. And it wasn't until I gave it all to him that I really was able to transform it from here to here. Yeah. Once it goes from here to here, that's when it makes a difference. That's when you see a change in each and every one of us. But as long as you have it up here and you don't transfer it to here, it's, it doesn't do no good. Because, see, you're still relying on your own understanding. Yeah. And that ain't good. I wish I would stay with my message. <laughs> it all goes together, though. That's right. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, we walk by faith, not by sight. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he's going to take us in a direction. If we heeded our own understanding, we would not choose to go that route. Right. Mm -mm. Because... It's not all peaches and cream, in case you didn't know. He said there will be trials and tribulations. Right? So don't think just because it's God's plan that it's going to be an easy one. Because what it is, he takes us through the valleys. Because he wants to build us, mature us into what he wants us to be. Life from a child to an adult is not an easy task. Same in your spirituality. Life from a child in your spirituality to a mature Christian is not an easy task. He has a lot of pruning to do, doesn't he? He wore two shears out on me. The first pair was dull in a matter of minutes. He had to do a lot of pruning. The simple truth of the matter is that the road leads us to God's plan. Sometimes it's rough terrain. Trust the Lord, not our own understanding. Right. You know, sheep are dependent creatures. Yeah. They have to be guided to food. They have to be guided to water. Uh, they're protected from wild animals. Sheep cannot survive in the wild by themselves. You put a sheep in the wild by itself, it's dead. They cannot. Now, who are we? We're sheep. He's the shepherd. Without him, we're dead. We cannot survive in this world without him. Right. Why on earth do we continue to try and do it? Why do we do it? Why our lives? The messes that we get ourselves into. Not all of it's God saying, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put you there so you'll learn a lesson. That ain't my God. That's my stubborn stupidity on my own self. But I seem to want to blame God for it. 
But in fact, it's because he told you to go right and you went left. Yep. He told you not to go there because when you go there, the little bit of the old you comes back. So I don't want you there. Stay away from there. Right. Stay away from them. They'll help you. Them. Stay away from them. Take heed to what we're understanding here. Watch what we do. Follow God's plan. Guys, I'm going to have you come on back up. And get ready to wrap this up if I can. Another thing with them shepherd I forgot to mention. Don't lead their flock into a cove or somewhere at night so when they lay down to go to sleep, the shepherd, they'll lay in the only place that you can get to them, the only narrow entryway to, to where that flock's sleeping, the shepherd will lay across that entryway to where any enemy, wolf or whatever coming after them, has to go through over him to get to the flock. Amen. That's our Lord. Amen. That's our Lord. He'll block the way. Now, you want to be a stray sheep? Go out to your little own way? Go ahead, but he's, he'll go get you. He'll go get you. He'll go get the one to leave the 99 faster. Yes. Right? Yep. Thank you, Jesus. Psalms 23, 4. David was a shepherd. Mm -hmm. And he knew, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, yep. I will fear no evil. Yep. For you are with me. Amen. Your rod and your staff, they comfort, comfort me. What's it saying? Trust God. Yep. Trust God. He never leaves us or forsakes us. He doesn't sleep or slumber. He watches over our lives. Put your trust in God. And I want to encourage you to take your hands off your problems and your circumstances and turn them over to God. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's who can fix it. That's, right. That's who can get the job done in the right way. God has a plan for each and every one of us. It's up to you to go for it. We'll be back back. Thank you for watching Zor House of Prayer's live broadcast. We stream live every Sunday morning and would like to invite you to come out and be in service with us. Sunday school starts at 10 a.m. and morning worship begins at 11 a.m. We are located three and a half miles past the Morgantown Mall on 19 South. Take a right onto Sugar Grove Road for a mile and the church sits on the right with a sign at the foot of the hill. Thank you and God bless.